Welcome to part 3 of this AWS DynamoDB series. This video is going to show you how we can retrieve items from our DynamoDB table. We'll be adding to our DynamoDB test application that we've been progressively building with each tutorial in this series. If you haven't seen part 1 or part 2 in the series, then the links are in the description below. Part 1 we created a DynamoDB client, then created a table. Part 2 we added items to our DynamoDB table. In this tutorial, we'll add get item endpoint to our .NET Core Web API. We will create the endpoint and write the code in such a way that will allow us to get either back all the items or a specific item based on the ID. Okay, so let's get started in creating the get uh, items endpoint. The get items endpoint, of course, is going to allow us to get items from our, from our DynamoDB table. So first of all, we're going to start by creating a endpoint in our controller. And like the rest of our endpoints, we're going to have a route, and we it's going to be the route of how to call our endpoint. We're going to have our task I action results our return type. And we're going to call this method get items. Now we are going to add a parameter in here, and we're going to add it from the query. We are going to add ID. Now you might notice that I've put a question mark here. That's to make the int nullable because what we're going to do is we're going to allow the user to get all items that are in our table or we're going to allow them to enter an ID that will then go and search for that particular record in our database. So we've made it nullable so that we can either provide an ID or we or not. We're just creating the method here that's going to call off to our get items code that we're about to write. We haven't actually written the get item class file yet, so that's why the get item is read. But using wishful programming, we're pretending like it's there at the moment. So finally, we're going to return an OK response if everything is successful, and also the value that is returned in the response. So let's go up the top here and add the I get item interface that we are about to create. We haven't quite created it yet. And we'll initialize that in the constructor. Okay. So now we can go across to our libs folder <clears throat> in our DynamoDB folder we can say add and we're going to add a class file and an interface get item class file make sure that that is public and we're also going to add an interface I get item And again, make sure that that is public as well. Okay, so let's start actually run the code that will allow us to get the items from our DynamoDB table. So what we're going to have here in this class is we're going to have a method that will then call off to a request builder. The request builder will build our request for us. Um, that might include the table name and what filters that we want to pass in, such as the ID. We'll then pass, they will then have back in that get items method, we'll then call off to our scan result, our scan async method, and this will actually get the results for us from DynamoDB table. We're going to run into some other issues where we'll need to do some mapping and we'll need to map to a model, but we'll get to that shortly. So, first of all, let's import our I Amazon DB client that we're going to need. Okay. 
and we'll initialize that in the constructor. We'll create our first method, the get items method. This will be async. And we're going to have a return type of dynamo table items. This is going to be uh, our model that we're about to create. Make our int nullable like we did on the previous page on the controllers. First method we're going to call off to is the request builder. But let's go back and create our model first because the model is going to be important in order for us to allow us to um, build. So I'm going to create the model classes inside the this class um, just to make things, I guess, uh, a bit neater at this point. But in reality, you'd want to uh, refactor these out into its own class file. Okay, so we're going to have a property called items that's going to be an ionumerable. And that's going to call off to our second class, our second model item. And inside that, they're going to have the properties that we're going to return back to the user. The first one is going to be ID. And the second is reply date time. Okay, so like I said, I'm adding the models inside our uh, get item class at this point. We'll look at refactoring that out at the end of this. Okay, so coming back to the request builder, it's going to be our first method that we call off to that's going to actually build our request for us. So we are going to change this return type uh, to task scan result response. And that scan response is a Dynamo SDK response. Okay, so let's first of all, in this request builder, we're going to do a check. We're going to check if an ID has been passed in or not. If an ID has not been passed in, then we want to get all items back. If an ID has been passed in, then we want to use that ID to filter on the results in our Dynamo table. So let's first of all do a check. <coughs> ID dot has value. And if that is false, we'll return new scan response request with just our table name in it. I'm just changing this return type to scan request up here. And I'm taking away the task. I This is not an async method. Sorry. I'm just changing this method. It's a return type because we just want to pass back the scan request. It's not an async method. Right, so let's write the code to actually return the value if we do have an ID. So return new scan request. Our table name. 
Now you can see that this is obviously a duplicate of the above code, so we might want to refactor that out. Okay, so expression names, so you need to pass in a dictionary um, of string and attribute value. And we are going to pass in uh, what the uh, attribute value that we want to um, filter on is. So it's going to be And our value in the database is in for number, and we want to say ID here. Cool, we'll just carry on and we'll write the rest. So we want to add the filter expression as well. And that's going to be our ID that we want to filter on. And we're going to add our projected our projection expression, and this is going to be the field that we want to be returned. So we want to be returned the ID and reply data. Okay, so let's fix up the syntax error. Um, it looks like I've got the wrong property here. Almost, it should be expression attribute values. Excellent. Let's quickly change this. Okay, lovely. So now we've got our request builder, which as mentioned, if it has an ID, then it's going to come down into our method down here, and it's going to then return the um, return the item that's based on the ID that's been passed in, and if not, it will return all items in our table. So let's head back up to our get items method. We're going to add scan async method and pass in the query request that we built previously. And this method is the method that's actually going to add the data or get the data from our Dynamo table. Okay, so far response. Going to use our Dynamo client, scan async is part of the client and we'll pass in the request that's been passed in in the parameters. Right, let's change this to async task. Scan response that we're going to Get back. Turn response. Excellent. So we're almost there now, but now we need to actually map the results that we get back from the DynamoDB table. And we're going to map them into the model that we created a little bit earlier. So let's head back up here and say return new Dynamo table items model that we created above items equal result and it's going to be collection so we're going to call off to a mapper okay so let's create a method that is going to actually map our objects we're going to at the method just below our get items method, but this isn't obviously a great place to put it, but we'll refactor that out shortly. And then return type of item, which is from our model below. And our premise is going to be a passing in, being passed in a dictionary with string and attribute. Two 
enter a new item ID which is from our models and we're going to say convert to an 32 because what we get back from DynamoDB is a string and we need to convert it into what our model is which is an int And reply date time. Fix up some of those syntax errors. And these values here are the column names inside our DynamoDB table. Okay, so looking good. So now finally, we just need to make sure that we have a couple of things. We have actually added our um, public methods to our interface. So we'll do that now. I'm just going to cheat a bit and copy and paste this. Yes. And we're going to make sure that we have dependency injected our get item class in our startup file. Inject I get item with get item class. Okay, so let's have a look at what's going on here. All right, so I haven't implemented the interface inside our class. And that's all looking good. So if we save everything and build. Let's have a look at what that is. So this ID, right. Because it should be actually ID here. Save and build again. Build succeeded, excellent. Okay, so let's run our application. Grab our port, head along to Postman, enter it in here. Now first of all, we want to get back all the items in our database. So we're going to hit our endpoint get items with no ID. Let's click send on that. And we'll return back three lots of items. So say that we want the second one, um, ID 2. Let's now add in the ID equals 2. And we get back just that single ID um, our item. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please remember to hit like and subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep up with all my latest YouTube tutorials.